If you're at home struggling with just even one dog, this, trust me, will change your life. Everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and today we're going to be talking about the power of place training. As you can see here, I have 16 of my biggest fans, and every single one of them is behaving really, really well because of place training. This is arguably the most important thing that you can teach a young puppy, and this is why. Okay, it's not natural for dogs to lay still and be still. They are hunting dogs, working dogs, sporting breeds. All of us have these dogs, and it is in their nature to hunt, explore, adventure their environment, whether that's your house or it's outside. And we want to talk about what we are about here, which is conditioning, developing, and prevention of naughty things from happening. Puppies are basically babies. And if you are working with your baby at home, you wouldn't leave it unattended to fend for itself. So you shouldn't leave your puppy either, okay? We've got little puppies here, all the way from six months, all the way up through about 10 years of age. And every single one of them has the ability to do what they're doing right now because of place training. If you're at home struggling with just even one dog, this, trust me, will change your life. We're going to be working on collar conditioning with Clay today, okay? He's already learned how to go to a dog bed, and that's pretty easy to teach. We have introduced the collar in the past, if you followed along with this series, and now we're going to be collar conditioning Clay to stay on a dog bed. We'll show you what this looks like, folks, and if your dog doesn't follow the exact path that Clay is, that's what we have Patreon set up for. It's patreon.com slash standingstonekennels. You can sign up on a subscription there and reach out to us on the daily with your questions. Even get a step-by-step -step training plan that we check in with you as often as weekly to continue to guide you in the direction you need to go. We will be covering place training so that you can have your dogs have the ability to behave like this. All right, everybody. So now that we have the distractions away, we are prepared with Clay to start his actual training session. We'll do a little bit of a warm up. I have his dog food here. This is the, he's actually moved as he's gotten older, needed a few more calories to the 3020 Sport in that Yukonuba dog food line. Um, we're gonna do a few warm up reps here. Kennel, good. This is simple, okay? So we talk about helping your dog to be successful in training sessions. And one of the best ways to do that is provide a controlled environment. And we got rid of all of the distractions in the room, all of those other really well-behaved dogs, but uh, also just have one dog bed for him to work on. Now, this is something that we already taught him. I'm not teaching this to him for the first time today. Good. So, kennel. Good boy. This is showing an understanding of the behavior, and that is key before we actually begin the collar conditioning process. Now, every dog is going to be a little different. Kennel. Once we start collar conditioning kennel, um, we can continue to feed him if he's willing to eat. Some dogs will, some dogs won't. Okay, good. Kennel. The more emphasis that you put on this uh, place training, the more reps you're doing, the better understanding your dog's going to have that going to the dog bed is a way to get rewarded, right? And once they figure that out, if you have a dog that has kind of learned through some um, <clears throat> free shaping training or teaching him how to use his brain to try and figure out what exactly we're looking for in the training session, um, you've got this you know, essentially anticipating guessing game. He's figuring this out and he's going to naturally want to stay there for longer periods of time. So it kind of helps to build some of the basics. <laughs> right now, I want to make sure that we're, we're differentiating between he's guessing and he's actually listening to what I'm saying. So we'll get him off here. Good. Good. Now, kennel. Uh, Clay, kennel. A little bit of body language helped with that one. Good. Okay. Less talk, more train, Ethan. Clay, kennel. 
Good. A very quick, almost immediate response to that, which is good. We'll do one more rep here. Clay, kennel? Good. That's what I wanted to see. That more um, he's facing me, he had to actually turn around and go. There was no peripheral. I can see the kennel. I know what's happening. And there was no actual assistance from me body language wise. So now we're going to eliminate the clicker from the situation because we only have so many hands and uh, we still will feed him if he's willing to eat. Now this is the, I'm going to walk through this portion really quick. I'm going to do my best here like we do in most of our videos. You aren't required to hold your hand up to use the e-collar, but if I lift my hand, it gives you that visual of the collar is on, the collar is off. And that shows you my timing. What I'm going to be doing is turning vibrate on, just like we did with the recall training. If you haven't seen that, go back to Clay's playlist and watch the last video. Um, we actually show in that where collar turns on, he's working on recalls, and uh, when we do these individual training sessions, especially teaching something new, we really want to be working on only one thing at a time. It allows to uh, prevent the least amount of confusion from happening. But I will turn the collar on, I will ask Kennel, and as soon as he's on the dog bed, the collar will shut off. I think you'll be able to see a good visual of when he's actually feeling the collar here. So, Kennel, now you see he's coming to me first. I may have to help a little bit more. As soon as he's there, it shuts off, right? We worked on recall first. There's two different things that we teach with the e-collar. If you have a, and there's two different ways that we teach them. People often ask the order in which. If we have a dog that's overly cooperative, um, we teach them to go away from us first. Typically, any of the retrieving breeds that we work with, we teach um, place training to go away from us first with the collar. Any dogs that are more independent, which is the way short hairs are, we teach them to come to us first because as you saw in his videos, he was picking up bumpers, he was running away. He was to that point of independence where yeah, it's kind of annoying. You've got to have him on leash all the time or he's not listening. So again, we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> turn the collar on first and then ask, kennel? And as soon as he's on the bed, the collar shuts off. Timing being very, very important here. Go ahead. Now, as soon as at this point, we're not working on any amount of duration. He's already like, all right, I understand what's going to happen next, um, which is the power of this, but we're not working on any duration. So he's on there. He can come off. We'll work on that here in a little bit. But Clay, kennel. Good. And this is just a vibrate, folks. Good boy. Okay. Good. Clay, kennel. Just a little bit of body language to help. Good. He's picking up on this very quickly for two main reasons. One, he already knows what kennel is. We showed that. We warmed that up. We showed him in this session. This is primarily what we're going to be working on. The other side of it is we've already taught him what the e-collar is and the basis of collar conditioning. This comes on. I listen for a cue when the collar shuts off. It's after I've complied with what I was asked. So good, come on, okay. That is why he's picking up on this very, very quickly. If done right, it should be easy, folks. So collars on, kennel, good boy. Now, I did two things there and it was a little bit subtle, but it was very powerful, okay? So body language helped him in a few of the reps, right? I stepped toward the dog bed, he moved with me. Did he move with me or did he just move with the movement? And that's what we were able to do in this rep. He was back over here and I stepped sideways. So not actually toward the dog bed, but my movement helped him move and then it clicked in his brain to do what he already knows is happening. Dogs have this very interesting thing and I think you will see this or you'll, you'll be able to make this connection now that I'm explaining it. But I have to explain it as their brains are directly attached to their feet. So there will be times where you've got a dog standing and they're staring at you and you ask them sit and you've taught them sit and they've sat 10,000 times, but for whatever reason, they're just standing and their brain is not on. But if you just get their feet to move and you say sit, then boom, they sit instantly because you have their attention and again, feet being directly attached to their brain, jokingly so, but it seems like you get those feet moving and their brain seems to be uh, working a little bit better then up by the camera. We're going to go kennel. 
Good. That's an easy one because he was coming back this direction. Okay. But it also showed that he wasn't recalling to you because he could have just gone across that. Yeah, that's true. So you probably don't have great audio on that end of this, but um, Kat just mentioned that it showed an understanding of what we are asking because he didn't cross a over the bed and continue to come to me. He actually stopped on the dog bed, which means, again, he understands get to the dog bed, shut the collar off. Good. Okay. Good boy. Kennel? Now, we are to that point in the session that this is a sign that we are done. All right? He's only leaving a foot or two, and then he's running right back over here, which means he 100% knows all I'm getting asked here is to go to the dog bed. Now, there are two more things here, lots of two-part thing, two thingies, right? Um, in this here, we're able to utilize what he's doing now to help move to the next spot, which is going to be building duration. And once we have a good understanding of building duration, then we can add distractions. And um, we've already started a little bit with some distance type of stuff. We're sending him from further distances. This is a... What are we, maybe 16 feet by almost 30 feet, 20 by 30, roughly, not quite. So we've got some pretty good distances here. Again, by the camera, I'm going to turn color on. Clay, kennel? Good. And we will finish with that. Um, the next session for him will look very similar to how this started. We'll do some of these different reps. And then what we're going to actually move into is asking for that duration game. And the way that we will do that is essentially turning the floor into hot lava. We'll ask him to stay there. And then if he comes off, the collar will turn back on until he is there. And he'll learn that anytime he steps off until he's released, the release being the key that once he's released, there is no instant request. Anytime he's not released, the collar is going to turn back on. And we can build duration very quickly in just one session. So with this guy's attention here, um, we're going to go ahead and call this his session. Thanks for everybody for watching. Please, if you have questions or concerns, reach out to us at patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. And until next time, I'm the guy with the pink gun, and we'll see you in the next video. Good job, bud. Good job. Ready? Okay. Legacy. <laughs>